Hello and welcome to On the Prowl. I'm your host, Austin Verde, and with me today is the coach of the Honville Tigers, Coach Nick Salter Formaggio. Thanks for joining us. Today, sure, coach. Austin. Thank you. Coming up on today's show, Coach Salt will break down last week's game against the Patterson Lumberjacks, and we'll get Coach to look ahead to this Friday's game against the Riverside Rebels. And finally, in today's show, we'll introduce you to the 2016 Pink Lynx campaign. Congratulations on your 30-0 win, Coach. How do you feel about your defensive shutout against Patterson? Well, anytime you get them, you feel good because they're hard to come by, you know, and um, we played really well up front. That, that kind of is the key for us right now. We're defending the run very well. How did you prepare for playing on a muddy, wet field? Did it take some time getting used to? Because normally you play on turf. Right, yeah, it does a little bit. Um, it just seems like we're getting used to playing in the rain, Austin. I, I think we could play in the middle of a desert in Arizona. It would rain on us because it's just following us everywhere. But uh, the hardest part of it is not dealing with the sloppy mud as much as it was all the other things like the ants and the mosquitoes. It was just, it was just real. I felt like I was out you know, hunting instead of playing, you know, coaching a football game. You rushed 385 yards this week, and last week you rushed a little over 200. How did you improve your run game? I just think it's a commitment at practice more than anything. Um, we're big up front, we're physical. Our offensive line has some really, really dominant players on it, led by our center, Drew Jones. Um, you know, and I, I just, running the football is a mindset, especially in this day and age where people like the passing game and all the run pass option game. Um, but I'm always a believer of physicality, and that's the hardest thing to kind of create in your run game. It's not necessarily who to block. You know who to block. It's about being a more physical dominant lineman, and that's just practice repetition and ma really making your practices tougher, and that's what we've done the last couple of weeks. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Now, right off the bat, we get a nice kickoff return by Michael Gray. Um, we actually wanted to go up the near sideline, but he took advantage of those guys bunching in between the hash marks and got outside and got us a great return to the plus 36 yard line. Unfortunately, we weren't able to score on it, and we come right back out, play defense. And um, again, like you said earlier, you know, when you get a shutout, you're doing a lot of things right on defense, and tackling was a huge part of what we were doing. And we came out the next series of downs, just made a solid commitment to running the football, Devontae Clark running the ball there on an inside run play, and then Anthony getting outside on, on a buck sweep and putting his foot in the ground on a really slick, slick, muddy field and uh, turning on the Jets and getting our first touchdown. And we we'll come right back out again. Um, and again, you can see guys kind of waddling around. It just We weren't able to get any traction whatsoever on the ground. Um, as uh, Trayvon Honor is an outstanding linebacker for us, getting a tackle for a loss. They punt the ball, give it right back to us. And then we go to work with Devontae again, who wound up running 25 times for 158 yards. Uh, we get a nice punt, keep him trapped down in the end zone and get a safety on the very next play by Trayvon Honor. And then the next down after the kick, uh, we get our run game going once again get Anthony on the outside, get Devontae running on the inside, uh, just really doing a nice job running the football. As senior offensive guard Mike Kindler on inside power making a nice block and we were able to turn it up and get the touchdown. And then just was the same routine over and over and over again really. I mean uh, we were running power most of the night. It was a play that they were giving us uh, and it was a play that we, you know, this was the same exact play. Anthony just uh, just bounced it outside, and used his speed to get a score. And then, uh, you know, defensively, again, we were more than up to the challenge. Then Coy Raynaud, who's a junior for us, who's become a very, very good football player, get, has given us an inside presence in the run game. Um, Lloyd Jones comes up, defends one of the few balls that was thrown during the night. And again, this is right before half. We get Anthony uh, on the outside on a speed sweep, just trying to trying to score right before half. And then uh, Austin, the only pass we completed that night uh, went to, for 20 yards to Anthony, and he was really close to breaking it. But uh, you know, we went into halftime with a 23 to nothing lead, and uh, felt really good about where we were at that point. Seems like Hanville had no problem dominating over Patterson in the first quarter. What made your offense so productive? Anytime you can run the ball like we were running it, you can kind of impose your will on them, Austin. And I think that that's really what we did. We just went there and took care of business. And, you know, the whole kind of theme of the week was 
was be, be the more physical team, be the more dominant team, and then you'll be fine at the end of the game. And, and that theme played out uh, as the game played on. In the second quarter, your defense forced the safety. Does this show that your in-the-box defense has improved? I think it has. I mean, part of that safety was we had a great punt. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a rough night to kick the ball. Uh, it, the, the middle of the field was really muddy. The ball was really, really wet all night long. Um, the snaps were tough to get, but, uh, you know, David Vial does a nice job. He's our deep snapper. He got, he got it to Dalton Malonso, who's our punter who uh, we actually kill, kill it. Uh, we bring a guy over and try to kill a ball inside the five, and, and it worked perfectly, and it led to, led to the safety. So really part of that safety, uh, even our defense got it, was made through our kicking game. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. It's nice to come out at halftime with a 23-point lead, I can tell you that. Uh, you know, we kicked off to them, we got a stop, and we get the ball right back to Anthony. Again, and, uh, you know, our one-two punch with, with he and Devontae Clark, and then Anthony splits a tackle and gets into the end zone. You know, we're up 30 at this point uh, early in the third quarter, and there wasn't uh, any use to kind of do anything more than what we were doing. Uh, we, we subbing some white jerseys in now and uh, let everybody get a little dirty, get some ants on them. You know, so we started to play a bunch of different guys, and it's always good when they can get that game experience. Um, you know, here we are missing the tackle, but our pursuit back to the ball was really, really good. And, uh, again, just running the football, running the football. That's uh, Jace Myers, who's a young sophomore for us, and uh, Tremont Nash, who's a, who's a junior for us. Both of those guys came in. That was Jace on those two runs and, and helped finish the game and got a lot of carries and uh, did a good job for us. So it was a good win, and it was one we needed, uh, considering the stretch we have coming up these next three weeks. What improvements did you see offensively throughout this half? Just the run block, and you know, it sounds like we're saying the same things over and over, but it is what we look to do. I mean, we want to be a physical football team at the line of scrimmage. And I think as the game wore on, and the fact that we were able to play, we, we were fortunate to have some pretty good quality depth on our offensive line. And so um, those were the things you look for. Can you get guys in the game that can compete at the level you need them to compete at to, for, for our program to be successful? And then uh, they did really a nice job for us. What improvements did you see defensively in this half? Well, we didn't give up a big play, and, and we didn't fold on the drive. They, they had a nice drive against us to start the second half. They took that kickoff and actually got down to like the plus 25-yard line. But, uh, you know, we, we came out and they tried a, a long field goal, about a 40-yard field goal on a really wet turf and um, or, or really wet field. And uh, we were able to get a hand on it and block it. So uh, it it's good. You know, in the past, we might have caved a little bit. But I think these guys are really resilient. I know they're really resilient. And um, defensively, we find a way to make the stops when we need to make them. How do you feel about the play of your special teams only two games into the season? I, I, we're really doing a great job. We emphasize it a lot, Austin. We work, we work every day on PAT, PAT field goal block every single day. And then on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, we work our punt. Uh, punt and punt cover teams and punt return teams and on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday we'll work our kickoff, kickoff return teams and our hands team and our, and our uh, onside kick team. So we put a lot of emphasis in the kicking game. It's, it's something I just have all, I, I, was, I learned as a young coach from my mentors that it's a, a third of the game and it's an important part of the game and uh, it's been paying off for us right now. Thanks coach. Coming up next we'll get coach to look ahead to this week's game against the Riverside Rebels and we'll find out how the, the 2016 Pink Links campaign is gearing up. We'll be right back. Who here has been personally victimized by breast cancer? One in eight women will develop breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. Breast cancer is the second most deadly cancer for women in the U.S. They're vintage, but you can buy for a dollar at your lunch. They're so fat. So adorable. Look how many people have burned breast cancer. Wow. 
In 2016, more than 2.8 million women in the U.S. will have a history of breast cancer. So, okay. You don't, you don't even go, go here. You ladies are out of dress code. On Wednesdays, we wear pink, but you could buy a pink link any day. <gasps> Welcome back to On the Prowl. I'm your host, Austin Verde. Before we get Coach to look ahead to this Friday's game, the Satellite Center's Patient Care and Health Ca Career Exploration classes are running the 2016 Pink Links campaign to raise money for breast cancer research. Pink Link program is when we go around the community to raise money for breast cancer. And basically, the Pink Link itself is when you donate $1 to the cause and at the football game on September 23rd, we stretch them across the field to see how much money we raise. Yeah. So the pink link, it says fight for pink, like, and then it says when it's revealing, and it, this year it's on the 23rd, September 23rd, and it's basically just uh, East, versus, East Bank versus West Bank, that's right in Homeville, and we link them together to spread them across the field, like I said before, and like, if you uh, donate one dollar, then you can write on them also if you know somebody that had breast cancer. Coach, last week Riverside won 33-28 against Parkview Baptist. This was their first win and they will be striving to stop your streak. How are you going to stop that from happening? Well, they came and whooped us last year, Austin. You know, they're a very, very good football team. They have a three-point loss to John Errett to open the season, uh, who's a defending state runner-ups in 5A. And um, they went up to Parkview, which is the defending Division II state champions, and beat them pretty handily. The score is not indicative of, you know, the, the game was 33-14 at one point. Um, they, they pos you know, pose a lot of problems for us. They're long and athletic at receiver. Their quarterback uh, is, a, is an excellent football player. He didn't play last year. He was injured. Um, and they're physical up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage, offensively and defensively. So, you know, for us, it's, it's going to be, the challenge for us is to go on the road again, playing on grass, it's probably going to be wet, against a very quality opponent and not making the mistakes that will allow us to get out of the ball game, to get out of our rhythm, you know. And so when you play a football team like that, and you know, I told the guys yesterday at practice, you have to play and practice against the opponent that you're playing that week. And we can't get into a false sense of security that we're 2-0 and and they're 1-1 one and one because they play two very quality football teams. And I said after practice, we practiced really well to beat Woodlawn. But we're not playing Woodlawn now. We're playing Riverside. And to beat Riverside, you have to practice with that same intensity that they're going to bring Friday night because they're, they're going to bring a lot of intensity. And it's just, um, you know, we have to have a good practice today and a good practice tomorrow and a good practice Thursday. And if we do those things, we'll be fine Friday night. But if we continue to practice in the same vein that we've practiced the last two weeks, it may not be so good Friday night. So, uh, you know, we more than have the weapons to do well. Uh, I think, again, you know, the, the onus is going to be on our defensive football team. We have to find a way to slow them down a little bit because they are very explosive, uh, both with their skill kids and with their physical size up front offensively. Riverside seems to have had problems this year on special teams. How do you think you could take advantage of this? Well, I know they're not going to kick to us, you know, so we have to find a way maybe uh, in other parts of our kicking game to be good. You know, our punt game, our punt coverage game has been really good, and it needs to be good this week because they have very good returners, and our kick coverage game has been very solid, and it needs to be because they have very good returners. Uh, the point of the game, you know, hopefully I'm getting them punting a lot. You know, if we can get them to punt a lot, we'll be in good shape either way, but our punt return game for us has to be special this week because I just don't think they're going to kick the ball to Anthony or Michael at all. And so, you know, uh, if, we, if we can find a way to get him to punt the ball and get some first downs in our return game, shorten that field for our offense, it'll be a good night for us. How do you feel about being ranked number 28 in the state and knowing that Riverside has been ranked number 9 overall in the state of Louisiana on MaxPreps.com? Uh, it's week two, you know, so uh, 
wherever we are, we're all, uh, wherever we are right now, it's where we are. Uh, as long as we're number one at week 15, <laughs> it doesn't bother me where we are today. And, you know, quite honestly, those guys deserve to be ranked higher than we are. They had a great year last year. They beat us last year. Um, and, again, a, a game that the score didn't in, in, is not indicative of, of how well they played against us. So, you know, we want to flip the coin. And if we can keep moving forward uh, over the next three weeks, our ranking will take care of itself because it's, you know, we got Riverside this week. Then we have, obviously, Destrahan next week, and they're ranked very highly. And then the next week we have St. Thomas Moore, who's ranked very highly. So if we can take care of business one week at a time, not look forward uh, to what's coming up and don't look back over what we've already done, just focus on this one week, the, these seven days, everything else will take care of itself. Give us an update on your booster club, Coach. Uh, we meet every Monday night, 6 o'clock in our school cafeteria and have a nice little meal. Uh, this coming week, we'll have Ed Daniels uh, from Friday Night Football coming to speak. It's a Destraham week, you know, this Monday, so it'll be exciting. And our freshman football team and their coaches will uh, have their introductions. And um, it's just a nice night to talk Hornville High School football. So we all look forward to it every Monday night, 6 o'clock in the school cafeteria. Thanks for joining us this week, Coach. Thank you, Austin. And that'll do it for this week's edition of Hornville on the Prowl. For updates and news on Press Play Productions, check out our website at PressThePlay.tv. I'm your host, Austin Verde. Thanks for watching. About one in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. In 2016, an estimated 2,600 men will develop breast cancer. Breast cancer is the second deadliest cancer for women in the U.S. An estimated 40,450 people will die from breast cancer this year. Seven out of ten women with breast cancer will survive more than five years after initial diagnosis. All the pink leaves would be sold to raise money for breast cancer research and they would be sold at all lunches. For just a dollar a link, you can help find a cure for these patients.